This is a unit 5 review problem, problem th 34. It's about in, uh, talking about the power of a test, or in this case, an experiment. So we're combining an experiment with a hypothesis test. Okay, so they want to know how will the following things affect uh, power? Will it increase it, decrease it, or remain the same? Assuming everything else is fixed. So probably you should also be challenging yourself to to know why. You know what? Why will the power increase or decrease? So let's take the first one, A. What I like to do is sort of draw a picture. Okay, and let's build a model. Okay. And let's just kind of anticipate where the standard deviations are. So this would be mu of the model. And here's the standard deviations. Okay. So basically sigma without giving it a number is is equal to this distance. Okay, about that that much. Let's say sigma 1 for um, a sample size n1 equals 40. Okay, so now if we have a different sample size, if we make n2 100, then the standard deviation for the model, SD of, assuming it's one proportion, the logic still holds for two proportion, but it's going to be P times Q over N. By the way, if you hear some noise in the background of this video, it's because I have a puppy playing behind me and I had to give her some toys. Um, otherwise, she'd be licking on my face or chewing on my socks or biting my toe or something. So anyway, uh, try to disregard that sound. So if, if N increases, as n increases, then sigma decreases. Assuming p and q are fixed. So same hypotheses test, so that's okay. So then we could what we could do is we could say that sigma 2 and just kind of let's just say it it's going to decrease. All right. So let's say let's let's also say that um, p hat, the the observed value, is right here. So our our p value right here would be a function, so p value of 1 is a function of z, and it looks like z is about 2, let's see, 2.2, 2. Um, 2. something like that. It's not 3, but it's bigger than 2. So now if we take this new standard deviation, sort of draw it in here like that we went out this way and this way because our sample size is smaller and if P doesn't move now we have one two three, four, about 4.4. 4. So Z is about 4.4 4 standard deviations away from what we expect. So the P value is also a function of Z. 
and z changes, it's much further away. So the further away we are from what we expect, the more we have a contradiction. Okay, remember that the null hypothesis is um, the null hypothesis. We say that mu is p, the center of the model, and then we get a, a p hat that is significantly greater than um, p. So I should put an s for significantly greater than something like that. So uh, let's go back and ask ourselves now well, what is power? Okay, so power is the probability of rejecting the null hypotheses. So in this case, when when the sample size increases, the power increases as well. Okay, that's my explanation. So the author's explanation is right here. The answer, they say, is the power will increase since the variability in the sampling distribution will decrease. We are more certain of our decisions when there's less variability. So a little bit more of an intuitive argument where I'm trying to, I'm also being intuitive because I'm, I'm not using exact values, but I'm trying to sort of give you sort of a picture to work with. Okay, so that's the answer for A. Now B, they want to know if everything stays the same, what happens to power if we increase alpha? So if alpha um, equals 0 0.05 and then it changes to equals 0 0.01, right? I want to just make sure. Yes. Okay, so what happens? So let's do a quick review. Um, alpha is the probability of a type 2 error, or no, type 1 error, type 1 error. And beta is the probability of a type 2 error. Okay, and, and power, as we set up here, Power is our ability. Power is the probability of rejecting HO. Power equals one minus beta. Okay, so just a little bit of a review. So if we draw a picture like this. If we set alpha to be at 0 0.05, 0 0.05, so I think if I drew a bigger picture of that tail right there, here's 0 0.05. Um, we reject HO um, when the p-value is less than alpha. Okay, so if the p-value is, um, say, right here, 
p-value, let's say it's 0 0.025. Okay, so when alpha is 0 0.05, we can reject. But if I, if I blow this picture up and put it over here, and let's say that this is 0 0.025, so that's our p-value. It's 0 0.025. And then we change the alpha. We change the alpha to 0 0.01. So now we've made alpha way over here. Okay, this area. Okay, well, so p hat is not below that mark. So now the p-value is not less than alpha. So uh, we fail to reject. So that's how I would look at that. So when, when the sample size, or when the, excuse me, when alpha decreases, The power decreases. There's one more way of looking at this. I've drawn this several times now in class, but it just helps you think through it. If here's beta and here's alpha, just think of this kind of slider relationship. And then here's beta and power, which you can remember from power equals 1 minus beta. So that's a pretty easy one to figure out. Okay, so now what we, we, what we just asked was if we're at 0 0.05 and we go down to 0 0.01, well then we were here for beta and then beta went Uh, so beta increases. So as beta increases, wherever it was, it went up. So if beta increases, what happens to power? Power decreases. So this is another view. Um, I think this one helps up here, but Understanding both gives you a rich understanding of everything. All right, so those, uh, those are sort of my quick answers to this question. I hope that helps.